Okay, I'm working on this uh, Jeep radio. Appears to have a few issues. Volume control is noisy. Um, the AM FM switch doesn't work. It looks like it's stuck on FM. You can tune it here. It will pick up stations. And there's a so it's on the radio position. A lot of these switches seem pretty flimsy. This kind of wobbles around loose. Let's try CD next. It's the middle position, which is hard to feel. And it's spinning up. And there's a play pause button here. So that appears to work. Q control. Looks like that switches tracks. So that's forward, there's reverse. That appears to work good. And there's some programming here. Looks like it's changing on the display, so that appears to work the repeat control. Inject. Seems to go up really slow. And if you push it too hard, it'll looks like sounds like it's skipping gears on the mechanism. Stop that, and then go to tape. That control sounds noisy too. Play works. Rewind. Fast forward, play pause works. Record control works at least. I don't have a mic to plug in to test that. And that's very slow. The antenna just plugs into the antenna port. That appears to be in bad shape too. Latch works. On the bottom there's uh, quite a bit of corrosion on the battery connectors. Both positive and negative terminals are very rusty. Could probably clean that up and make it work at least. One other thing I noticed is the only the left speaker is working. Like someone's been in here before. There's splices on the speaker wires. So it looks like this speaker's non-original. Someone bent the tab in there to screw it down. Okay, this other speaker looks like it could be original. There's tape around here. Wires have been spliced. Okay, I see some corrosion on screws for the circuit board, so they're Probably some water damage. So I might pull pull these boards out and try to get access to some of the switches and see what's causing those to not work. Speaker connector just unplugs. Input power is directly soldered. I might temporarily remove those so I can get this whole board out. Looks like this connector on the back might be an additional antenna. And it's connected directly to the other antenna. Okay, so I got the speaker detached. I'm just gonna cut these wires. I'm gonna clean most of this up anyway. Okay, I got the fluke meter here. Let's measure the speaker. Looks like it's open circuit. 
making sure it's holding on here tight. Measuring myself there at one mega ohms, but speaker should be between four and sixteen for most normal speakers. And this one looks open. So I'll pull this out and see if it's possibly just a connection further in, but most likely the speaker's blown. Looks like an 8 there, but I don't know what this other lettering is. 3, 3 watts maybe, 8 ohms, 3 watts. I'll measure right on the speaker terminals. When that's open, check the leads here. I can see them going into the voice coil. Nothing broken there, so the voice coil itself must be uh, open. Okay, I'm going to desolder this antenna wire just so I can have better access to the circuit board. I might start with this board on the left. Looks like this knob will have to come off. This one's the same way, it's potentiometer, the plastic cover on the shaft. It also has a switch down here. Oh, it's a two-piece. Top came off, so that should be okay. You can see how, how these switches work. So they got a nice looking lever on top to make it look like a good switch. And inside it's controlling this circuit board mounted switch. Another screw right here. One in this hole. One in this hole. For some reason there's a piece of hot glue there instead of a screw. There's a hole for a screw. There's three screws here and no screw on this fourth one. Looks like this whole thing warped, probably got hot maybe from outdoor use in the summer. Okay, so I was able to pull off this dial. Um, this needle basically has just pushed it into a hole, so I had to pull that out first. It's just a round shaft, so basically just some friction fit holds it, so to uh, align it, basically you'll have to tune in the station, put the needle where it is, and then don't touch the needle again. So I'd like to see if I can get this off without um, too much trouble. Try to keep the string from completely falling apart. Not sure if this will work. I might just tape this on here so it doesn't like fall out and come unwound. The spring is pretty rusty too. I'll probably just put some kind of protectant on it. Here's the circuit board. Looks like a little bit of uh, corrosion in this area. The whole circuit board is uh, warped too. It's kind of sagging in the middle. Hold it at an angle here. 
and see it goes down there's a low point right here a bunch of corrosion here I'm guessing water got into the hole for the switch worked its way down into the switch so this would be AM FM this is the switch on top and I can see the shaft is broken so even if I fix this switch it's not really going to work as is unless I find a new top piece but this is not a normal thing this is probably just custom made for cheap or this particular radio I could possibly do those install a toggle switch right to the chassis something like this would be probably won't fit small version of this I think it's just a two position I need also it's just AM FM these outer four are just the physical hold down for the case of the switch Contacts. Looks like some of these might be and rather than just pulling it and hoping it comes out, sometimes it's good to wiggle on the pins and see if they're actually free from all the solder that one feels stuck that one and these two and this one like a lot of rust flaked off the outer case and worked its way under here to the pins so there's these little tabs that hold the bottom PCB material that hold the switch together so I just took this flush cut and kind of just grabbed it and bent it up a little bit just enough to hopefully get the circuit board out looks like there's a little ball bearing or some kind of device to kind of make it latch between the two positions so that might fall out when I pull the switch apart Looks like this might be re reusable. And a little pin here. I'll clean that up. And there's these sliding contacts. Like none of this is metal that will rust. Um, so it actually looks okay inside. Um, the shaft itself appears to have some rust on it. I might be able to clean that up. The ball bearing just flew out here. There's the ball bearing and a spring not too bad um, if I can clean it up and keep the rust from coming back too quickly probably be okay but then again this switch won't work unless I can find an equivalent shaft of the original to reach this lever I might put this in a small bag in case I need it. Okay, I think I'll clean off this uh, old flux and, and see uh, what connections are actually needed. 
Then we can maybe run wires from here to the chassis for the replacement switch. I'll clean out this volume pot with uh, this Deoxid D5. Basically you just find the axis here. The contact material is on the upper surface of this PCB material. It doesn't take much of this to just work this back and forth. Spray a little into the switch here to clean up those contacts. And then the antenna port, spray a little on this brush. That's a pretty simple, just metal to metal connection. So it looks like the only contacts used are this pin here and this one here. So basically a, just a very simple toggle switch could replace this just by running wires to these two contacts. It's a common uh, toggle switch. Way more contacts than I need for this case. I'd really only need two. But this would still work if you just use two of them. Um, if it fits. I found this switch that has just three contacts, so I already had wires on it and heat shrink, so I figured I'd use this one. I ran the wires through the bottom of the board, and I'm using a slot that existed before for the other switch. It's kind of a strain relief for the wires to kind of help guide it to the right position. I've got this at about 150C. I'm going to try to unwarp this dial here. Not sure if this will work. Hopefully, it doesn't make it much worse than it is. Plan is to heat it up and then sandwich it between two plates of glass to try to flatten it. There's some hot glue on the bottom there from before. Not sure if that's better or worse. I'll try one more time. I'm going to put a little grease on this spring here. It's fluid film. Kind of, some people use it to undercoat their cars. I'm going to try to find a screw for that last hole. That's the one that was missing. I'm going to have to move this to align it at some point. So I don't know if I want to completely reassemble it. I can probably bolt this back onto the circuit board though. Okay, so I got it partially reassembled. I found a couple speakers that are the same size as the originals. They don't have the plastic material, so they would that would be ideal for outdoor use, but it's all I have for now, so I might just put these in. Um, I have a power supply externally hooked up to the power lines here. And then the speakers, I'm just temporarily wiring with these jumpers. So turn the volume on here. This also is the power switch. And it looks like both channels work now, left and right. This is FM radio. And then here's the FM AM switch. So now this should be AM. See if we'll pick anything up. 
Tuesday morning at the so looks like that works also. So next will be to get this dial kind of tuned in. I could just find a station that I know the frequency and just move the dial to the right spot. Okay, so what I ended up doing is I have this device uh, called the Tiny SA, which has an output that can output um, RF frequencies. So what I did is I tuned it to a known location on the dial, a marked location, which is 101.5. So I tuned this to 101.5 and added a modulation of 400 hertz. I'll turn the volume up here. So when I tune that in, center it. That's 101.5. Now I just move the dial, match that right up at 101.5. Now the dial should be at least somewhat calibrated. 